guys and welcome to my studio today Audie G here and we are going to look at a project for this month's creative arts collaboration event which is hashtag love summer art you will be searching for that hashtag to see all the other offerings for this event from other artists who are also going to be focusing on the love summer art theme The idea for this event came from a current swap that I'm involved in from a Facebook artist group. It is for an altered playing card doll. So I decided I was going to make a summer themed doll. And I guess you could call this girl my junk pile girl. Because what I did is I looked on my desk and everything that was on my desk just scraps and different pieces I put them in a pile here and I'm going through them and deciding that I'm going to use some of the leftovers I recycle everything and it's a good way to just have a little fun of seeing what I can do with what's left on my desk from other projects I'm sketching out the girl's face and putting down a layer of Delusions Blue Acrylic. Now I'm applying some Crafters Acrylic and some Crafters Acrylic in yellow in different spots. And adding a little blue. I'm not really thinking too much about this face. Now I'm adding orange. I like to play with different underpaintings for faces just to see how they shine through as layers. So I have really no reason for why I'm doing what I'm doing. I just want to see how it turns out in the end. And when I'm drawing my faces, I like to freehand it and not use helper lines very often because I like to get more of a whimsical look and I like for the faces to be a little different as far as the eye shape, never the same. I don't pay attention to the dimensions. I want at least one of the eyes to be a little different. I think it adds perkiness to a face. I'm going to speed up the face painting for this reason. My faces take several hours to do. And for a YouTube video, it would take quite a while to explain that. I have had a several online teachers who have online teaching platforms. I've had three of them in the past year come to me and ask me to do a co-teaching event with them online. So that is in the planning stages and in the works and I will let you know when that takes place. And that way you can spend the proper amount of time learning how to do faces. You can also go on my website and there are a few classes on there where I have links to classes where you can learn about faces. I will take a little more time telling you about how I did this girl's hair. I'm doing a Delusions Purple paint here. It's in acrylic and I'm using that as a first layer. Now I've decided to apply some Deco Art Antiquing Cream. I originally got it out to put it in the hair and then I decided <laughs> at the last second to apply it to the corner of her eyes to see how that would look. Now I'm taking it and applying it to the hair. I want her to be a redhead.
particular color that I'm using in the Deco Art Antiquing Cream is the English Red Oxide. Another one I like to use a lot in my art is the Pantina Green. You'll see me in other videos use it also. Now I'm following up with a watercolor crayon, Karen de Ash, in a similar red color and activating with water. I think I've yet to go through a painting where I didn't use Karen de Osh watercolor crayons. They are a go-to staple for me. I absolutely, if I get down to it and I'm quite honest, my favorite medium to use is the Soft Conte pastels all by themselves with nothing else. It's so relaxing to layer with them. And one of the reasons that I don't do it on every single painting is I've discovered for me that I'm highly sensitive to the dust when it's used inside. And so I'm really hoping now that it's good weather, if it ever stops being ever stops raining around here to get outside and use them before it gets too hot. I did a several projects back in the fall where I was using them. There's some videos on here where I'm layering with them for Halloween and I just really love, like I said, the way that they layer and the way the colors look. They're so vibrant. And I noticed that after using them, I was coughing and breathing and couldn't breathe very well afterwards. Even though I had a wet towel underneath to catch the dust, it still managed to go everywhere. And the reason I'm telling you this is, is just be careful when you're using pastels like that. If you're highly sensitive to stuff like that, it could be irritating your lungs like it did mine. I don't smoke or anything, but we think what the issue is, why I'm so highly sensitive to them is, you might have heard me say this before, I had a near fatal car accident in 2007. And when the airbags popped, all this toxic dust material went everywhere and I inhaled that in large amounts into my lungs. Now I'm adding a layer of gold in the golden transference paint. Before that, I used a layer of zinc white to add some highlights. You can use zinc white or you can use a gesso for that. They seem to give a similar look either way, whichever you prefer. Gesso is, of course, the more economical route, I think, than using the zinc white acrylic paint. Now that we got the face and the hair out of the way, we're gonna look at the card body. Here I'm layering on some acrylic golden grounds over the top to prepare the surface to hold the acrylic paint a little better. Now I'm looking 
looking at some of the pieces that I had little junk piles of set here and we're gonna start to design her dress the really funny thing is is the main part of her skirt was something that was like a it was not a Kleenex but it's like a tissue type material and it was in a square and my cat had knocked it off somewhere in my sewing room and so I thought hmm maybe I'll use that as part of her dress grounds on there I decided to use the watercolor crayon in yellow that's okay it'll hold it too now I've got out the little arms the articulated arms this is supposed to be a jointed doll so these are going to be my jointed pieces and some of my other art dolls in previous videos I've made the head move too made the head also a jointed piece but for this I'm not going to make her head move her hair's so big for one thing that I thought I'd try something a little different this time I added the acrylic grounds to the limbs and now I am using Deco Art Antique White. That is the Deco Art acrylic glitter paint. This will be her bodice with the where I'm using the glitter paint. No more the design of the skirt. There's that piece of square tissue I found laying on the floor. I can't believe what a great little skirt it makes. It just it easily gathers up and glues right into place with the little pleats. The flower and the other part of the skirt with the pink is from the Mother's Day video I did, Leftovers from It, for the Hummingbird video. And I thought, wow, how cute that would be in a skirt. Leftover pieces of lace. Part of a Prima flower that I'd already taken pieces off of before for another project. I'm just going to add little flowers from it to create a waist. always been a huge black and white checkerboard fan so I usually have scraps of it laying everywhere I don't know how many rolls of checkerboard washi tape I own too many taking the seam binding and using the Tim Holtz Distress Stain ink to add some color to it, scrunching it up to give it that shabby look that I always go for. And we're 
we're going to make some little embellishments for her hair. I believe the glitter stuff is Tim Holtz. using the Fabrifix glue to glue in the hair embellishments because it's alcohol based and doesn't warp. doll swap going on I just had to do it I am so addicted to doll making that every chance I get to have an excuse to make one I'm gonna hop right in take on the challenge that little piece of paper was sent to me in the last swap that I received from a sweet lady in the Netherlands I thought it's mustaches, but when I was looking at it, I thought that'd make a cute little collar. So I've cut a couple of them out. I would tell you her name, but it's Dutch, and I would probably butcher it. <laughs> I'll have to ask her sometime how she pronounces her name. I couldn't believe it. She was supposed to send... ATC cards. It was fairy or fantasy themed ATC cards. Not only did she send the ATC cards, but she sent the farm with it. I couldn't believe all of the cool goodies she sent with it. She's so generous. It's really addicting to get in these swaps because you meet some of the most fabulous people from around the world and when you get the package in the mail and you hold in your hand what they made it just it just does something it's like I can feel their heart when I'm holding it in my hand and that's just priceless to me I don't have a lot of time to get involved in too many of them, but I try to at least set aside some time in between my other projects to do swaps because they are so rewarding.
doll videos. I have several doll videos and I will put them in a playlist and link them above in the information card. Just click on the information card above and it'll take you straight to the playlist and you can watch them one right after another. summer girl ready to go frolicking through the rose garden have tea under the trees I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe sharing I really appreciate sharing as well it just triggers YouTube and its algorithm to share my video so it can be found by other people when you take time to do these things. So I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And in the comments below, I would love for you to tell me if you were involved in any swaps or any favorite groups. I'd love to know what those are. And thanks again for watching. Take care, everybody. Thank you.